Today, John Romandi is making his weekly visit to Lippincott Fabricators in North Haven, Connecticut. Since last fall, Lippincott's craftsmen have been translating John's 40-inch maquette into the full-scale sculpture. As far as I'm concerned, Lippincott is the finest sculpture fabricated that there is. They make it very clear that this is the artist's studio. And when I come here, this is really my studio. And I have complete free run of everything. It's a beautiful way to make art. First, the maquette is enlarged to a 10-foot model. This model is used for the final engineering of the full-scale piece. Each of the angles, curves, and seams that are shown here will be enlarged based on the measurements taken from the 10-foot version. I like this detail on this scale, but on the real piece, I don't want this to occur. I don't want that edge. Ah. This form and this form, this edge, they're all one. And they all split off in different directions, thank you. OK. But um, why don't we go look at how the form is on the piece now? And 17 years I have done this. But I know there's a difference between scale. I know from the 10-foot model to the 60-foot piece, I want to be sensitive to that transition. In the process, I might say to Kim, wait a minute, I want to relook at this line. I want to relook at that curve. I've made a few adjustments already. But the fact is, they don't throw down their tools and say, oh, that's it, you changed it. You know, it's an extra, you know, and crazy stuff like that. They don't, they understand this is a creative process. They're not making a toolbox. They're making a piece of sculpture, monumental sculpture. As you're measuring, you get a feel for it. That's why I couldn't just take measurements uh, of the whole thing at once. And then I'd lose the feel for everything. Each piece that I measure up to roll, I do it as I'm ready to roll it. This way I can have it in my mind fresh of, you know, a little twist here, where, and then it starts to come out of the twist into a flat, it starts going the other way. Paper templates are made, which are enlarged and used to cut out each of the dozens of pieces of bronze plate. Bronze plates are then shaped in large rollers to take on the precise curves indicated by the 10-foot model. Each piece is carefully measured and checked. There can be no mistakes. An error of just a few degrees would be magnified into large deflections over the length of the 60-foot sculpture. I love it. I love it. It's so uh, free-flowing. A lot of times you don't even want to go home at a certain point. You want to stay over and uh, try to finish putting this one section together or finish rolling a piece. And it's hard to get away from it sometimes. You know, uh, I'll even think about it in my sleep about how to approach it the next day. It is a very slow process. Each new piece can take a day or two to form and fit onto the slowly evolving sculpture. I guess the biggest challenge that, that this piece has is focusing on the grace and overall flowing character of the element. In this case, it's particularly important uh, because of the method of construction is such that uh, the lower parts have a triangular section. And when you put these pieces together, you can often uh, get things out of whack and create lumpy spots. So uh, right. what we're doing is paying special attention to that. And I think it's coming out real well. Flipping, flipping, flipping. Yeah, no good. The seam is right here. Yeah, at this point. Well, you feel it inside. There's a big gap in yeah. there to match Look the plate. Over here. Once the piece is in position, it is tack welded into place. Each seam is welded shut, and then the welds are ground down to conform with the final edge that John requires. When all these segments are on, I can stand away and overview it and make sure that that beautiful landscape-esque, very female form is the way I want. Does it have the right attitude? Is it projecting the right sense of, of poise? I want it to appear as though it's just landed, or maybe it's just taking off. And that's a very precarious kind of situation for 15 tons of bronze. But a sculpture is more than bronze plate and welded seams. Sculpture 
particularly John Ramondi's sculpture, conveys meaning which goes beyond the thing itself.